Hi there, it's Lara here. Uh, I'm back. This is your Witchy Wednesday for the week of January 2nd to 8th, 2019. It's 2019. Um, welcome to the new year. Happy New Year. Before I go any further, I just want to say um, thanks for hanging in there and sticking around. You might be wondering where I've been the last couple of weeks. Um, especially if you don't follow me on Facebook and Instagram. If you follow there, then you probably already know. But um, I um, had a bit of a hellish holiday in many ways. I we I lost my father the week before Christmas, um, somewhat unexpectedly. And so, obviously, you know, that uh, threw uh, our wrench into things, to say the least. And um, I just I just couldn't be here. For you because I was taking care of other things including my own you know well-being so um, I'm back and you know I hope that you'll stick around and I was thinking back the last two weeks because I missed the last two weeks in a row with these videos was those are the, it's the first time I've missed a witchy Wednesday um, since I started doing these videos and um, and I can't even remember that's been you know well over a year now anyway so um, sorry about that but it uh, was really beyond my control so um, if this is your happens to be your first time here to the channel thank you so much for joining me and I hope you stick around and what if you know if what I have to say here resonates with you then please do let me know subscribe to the channel um, you know share the videos leave a comment leave a question um, what have you okay and if you're interested in a personal reading I, I'm back at that now too there was a, some delay I got done what I needed to do in terms of uh, Christmas orders but then um, you know, there was, uh, I, you know, I've had a bit of a hiatus for a couple of weeks, but now back in the saddle and back at it. So if you're interested in, um, in that, then please do have a look at my website, the links below, and you can, um, contact me with any questions you have. So because I missed the last two weeks, I missed speaking to you about the solstice, um, and about the full moon in cancer. But I trust, and the sun shifting into Capricorn, a couple of other things, but I trust that you got what you needed um, from somebody. And, you know, also, <clears throat> excuse me, if you do follow along on Facebook and Instagram, I did post some, you know, some tidbits there about that. So um, if you if you haven't done that yet, you might want to just because there's more regular updates and it takes a lot less time for me to make a quick post on Facebook or Instagram than it does to do a whole video here. So, you know, you'll get that those updates more often and, and the links to those are below as well. Um, but we're going to just sort of jump into it here and I'm going to spend most of this video talking about the upcoming eclipse in Capricorn. There is a, um, a new moon uh, partial solar eclipse happening in Capricorn on the 5th at 15 degrees Capricorn. And this is going to kind of feel like, you know, more the beginning of the new year. Like right now we may still be in a little bit of limbo um, after the holidays. And although you know, Mars has recently moved into its home sign of Aries. So that's been a hit of fire and a hit of um, sort of, you know, action and, and will and passion. Um, but it may not feel quite ready to take off just yet. We have, um, well, a couple of things prior to or around the time of the eclipse, which is happening on the 5th. So Mars is, as I just mentioned, now in Aries. Um, Mercury is entering Capricorn on the 4th, right? And so that is where our thinking becomes more practical, more um, realistic, more perhaps more serious, methodical. Um, but hopefully not pessimistic, right? Um, because on the shadow side, you know, Cap can have that tendency. But um, 
you know, we're getting a little bit more serious about things starting around the 4th. And then uh, I have all kinds of notes here. My brain's still not firing on all cylinders, so I need these <laughs> more than usual even. Then on the 6th, we have Uranus moving direct in Aries. So that'll be a hit of um, forward momentum as well. And that's going to be like, you know, a final surprise or, or, or some final bit of upheaval or insight, right? In whatever area of the chart Aries sits for us. Um, Uranus and Aries is a bit of a volatile combination, right? And this has been what's going on for us globally since 2011 because Uranus moved into Aries in March of 2011. And so... It's been this long-term transit of uh, of Uranus and Aries, and and then it entered Taurus in I believe May of 2018, but then it retrograded back, right? And so it's been in Aries for the last little while, and it's just kind of um, you know, as I said, it's going forward on the sixth, so it's that final sort of clearing out or cleaning up of that energy in Aries for all of us collectively and then personally again wherever Aries sits in the chart for us right um, and if you have your own personal chart whether it was done by me another astrologer or you've done it yourself then you'll have that information um, I did do a whole separate video on Uranus's transit through Taurus because it's a long-term transit. It will be in Taurus until July 2025. And so if you, you might want to check out that video on my channel. Um, it's in a folder called, you know, uh, Special Astrology Videos, I think I called it. Um, and there's a few videos in there about specific things. So you can check that out if you want. Um, you know, so Uranus is, is kind of this hard to, to control energy, right? It's a bit erratic. And being in Aries, that was even amplified. And that's evidenced by what we, you know, just look <laughs> look at what's been going on in the world um, since 2011 and, and in your own life, maybe where there's been some upheaval, right? And um, with Uranus moving into Taurus and having this long-term stay, there will be shifts and changes, no doubt, because that's what Uranus brings. But perhaps because it's in Taurus, you know, a fixed Earth sign, it'll be a little bit more perhaps grounded or contained, um, you know, hopefully anyways. So again, have a look at that video if you want information, more info about that. Um, the other thing I want to mention before I talk a lot about the, the eclipse is that on January 7th, Venus is entering Sagittarius, so moving out of Scorpio and moving into Sag. So with that, we will find, you know, a little bit more lightheartedness in our relationships um, and a little bit more optimism and maybe some some more frankness or, or um, bluntness or truthfulness as well, right? That's Sag energy. So those are the tidbits and... Um, I'll mention to you where the moon is at. Right now it's in Capricorn. Or sorry, right now it's in Sag, Sagittarius. And it's moving into Capricorn on Friday when we're going to have that eclipse, the new moon eclipse. And then um, it will move into Aquarius on Monday. So let's spend the remainder of this time talking about the eclipse energies. And then um, before I sign off, you know, as I usually do, I will go through each of the signs and I will speak to how this eclipse is impacting each sign. Um, my heat kicked on there a minute ago, so you, you may hear that in the background. There's just no way of controlling it, and we need heat right now. It's really cold here today, and it has been. So not much to be done about that. Um, sort of to segue into talking about the eclipse, you know, Yesterday, I did a Facebook post. I hadn't really posted anything yet about the new year. And if you've been following me for a while, you, you'll know that I don't put a whole lot of stock necessarily into like these calendar dates, right? Our traditional calendar dates. And so although we as a general, you know, Western society anyway, um, we mark the new year as January 1st, 
there are other things to take into consideration um, when we're looking at the cycles of nature and the astrological placements and that kind of thing. Um, and really, you know, January 1st is Capricorn season. We're in the dead of winter here. It's not really like a fresh start. Um, but that's kind of the way we have our our calendar set up. And so that's what we tend to, to go with. Um, you know, the solstice is around this time. So that is a shift in energy um, around the Christmas season. And, um, but, but what I want to say is that this new year may actually feel, you know, as we move through January, like a new start. And part of that is because of the astrology and these eclipses. We're having two eclipses in January. Um, and the first one is on the fifth, right? But getting back to the Facebook post that I, I, I made yesterday, I was just talking about the fact that, you know, 2018 was a hell of a ride for, for all of us, I would say, for most of us anyway. Maybe some of us had an easier time. Um, and um, if that's the case, good on you. But most of us had some struggles and some challenges, and it was um, there was some upheaval. Uh, and and on a global scale, definitely, right? We've been through a lot. And I think we really need to acknowledge and recognize that and pat ourselves on the back. You know, we made it through all of that. And as much as it sucked on a number of levels, it was totally, completely necessary. So we have to kind of look at the lessons, you know, that we hopefully learned and, um, be grateful for for even the tough stuff because it's it's allowing us to grow and evolve into who we are to become right and um and so we have to be grateful of that and grateful for that and we have to kind of try to look at you know try to look on the bright side to acknowledge you know, not to ignore the dark stuff. I, you know, I'm not one of these people who's like, if you just think positively, everything will be great. N sorry, that's not the way it works. <laughs> I've tried to do that before. I've been there. I, I went through that, uh, that whole, um, you know, phase in, in my, in my uh, spiritual evolution. And, you know, sometimes it's totally, absolutely necessary to go into those dark places and to embrace that and to get what you need from that, but not to stay there, right? That's where that whole um, looking on the bright side thing comes in. You know, we have to look for the bright side in the darkness or we have to realize that this too shall pass and, um, you know, everything ebbs and flows. And so we're, it's not always going to be shitty <laughs> like you know it, it it the good times will come um just as the bad times well that's life and the sooner we can uh, accept that the better off we are and the greater sense of contentment we can have right i'm personally i think uh, one of the things i'm i'm learning and i'm shooting for um you know moving forward into 2019 and beyond is is contentment over happiness. I think that we have been, um, this whole idea of being happy has been shoved down our throats and, and, and I, you know, happiness is fleeting. Contentment is steady for sure. You know, I wish all of us many, many moments of happiness, but we need to be realistic <laughs> I'm going to get to that when I talk about the Capricorn eclipse and all this energy in Capricorn and Saturn and, you know, a approaching Capricorn towards 2020. But we need to be realistic and we need to realize that contentment is for the long haul. Happiness is fleeting, right? And um, there is some comfort and some relief in acknowledging and recognizing that. And so just to finish off here. Um, in my post yesterday, you know, I talked about what if we just all did our best this year and if that was good enough and we recognize that our best is different on any given day and that that's okay. And 
if we, you know, we realized that, you know, we take our cues from nature and realize that even nature's not in full bloom all the time, right? There are ebbs and flows. That's, that's a normal, that's a normal cycle. And, um, you know, we, we need to acknowledge that and be okay with that. And, um, if we're doing our best, what more can we do? Right. And so that's kind of where, where I'm at right now. And, um, you know, I encourage you to be, you know, to take the wisdom that you've gained over 2018 and even 2017, you know, even if we look back at the Uranus cycle since 2011, take that wisdom and move forward, you know, and, and be more gentle in your approach um, and more perhaps grounded in your approach moving forward to 2019. Um, slow and steady wins the race, folks. I've been saying that for a long time and I, I firmly do believe that. So the January 5th new moon solar eclipse, 15 degrees Capricorn, right? So this is like any new moon where the sun and the moon conjunct each other. They meet up in the sky to birth something new. With an eclipse, this energy is amped up and there is this, in this case, partial darkening of the sun. Um, and, and, and so that, you know, when that happens, it sort of, it reveals something to us, um, that may have been previously hidden, um, or it literally eclipses something out in order for us to have a fresh start or see something in a new way or shift our perspective or let go of something um, that we need to let go of, right? And so this eclipse is one in a series of eclipses that fall on the Capricorn Cancer axis, right? The last of which w won't happen until January, 2020. Um, so there is a longer story, a greater theme playing out here for all of us collectively you know, um, when we consider the general themes or archetypal energy of Cancer and Capricorn, but also on a more personal level for each of us individually, um, that's going to be felt for us in whatever house Capricorn sits in our chart, and then the opposite um, Cancer, right? Cancer and Capricorn are opposite each other. So this area of life you know, wherever that falls for us, is up for some major restructuring, the beginnings of which we may have already experienced. Um, and again, we're going to touch on what area that is for each of us at the end of the video here. So just in general, the Cancer Capricorn axis is about public life, Capricorn, versus private life, Cancer. Um, the inner and the outer worlds, the emotional Cancer and material Capricorn worlds. The matriarchal, right, um, archetype kind of thing, which is Cancer, and the patriarchal, which is Capricorn. You know, so masculine and feminine. Um, it's about nurturing Cancer versus sort of doing. Um, and seeking balance in these things is the ultimate goal here, really. So just to look back, solar eclipses occurred at close to the same degree on January 4th of 1973 of 1992 and of 2011. So if you look back to those around those times, you may see um, similar themes playing out, right? And eclipse energy tends to last for, for longer than a new moon, right? So like three to six months. And th these eclipses are playing out, as I said, over time for us. And we also have this Cancer Capricorn axis or po polarity being highlighted because we have the North Node that has shifted into Cancer, right? And the South Node in Capricorn. So that is even amplifying this energy, this polarity here. Um, so... Uh, Capricorn energy is, again, it's about the public life. It's about our career, our ambitions, our public reputation, our status. Um, it's about authority and mastery and discipline and adulting, right? Maturity, responsibility, accountability. Um, it's about planning for practical, you know, in a practical way for the future, right? In a common sense way. And it's about manifesting in the tangible, 
manifesting something tangible in the in the you know the tangible material world so but capricorn realizes that there are limitations and boundaries but it doesn't stop you know the ruler of of capricorn is saturn and i'm going to get to that in a minute but it doesn't stop capricorn corn from continuing to climb the mountain right um to try to reach the the, the precipice um but it knows that you can't necessarily do that overnight so you need to move slow and steady be sure-footed be realistic and you know not get your shorts in a knot if things are not necessarily going according to plan or if obstacles um, get in the way right capricorn is is like the survivalist of the zodiac it knows how to survive the long cold nights of winter right we're in the dead of winter as i said and it will enact austerity measures when necessary um, it, it sort of just keeps plodding along, doing its best with what it has, finding ways around the obstacles and, uh, you know, keeping ever grounded and persistent. But on the shadow side, right, every energy has a shadow side and Capricorn's no exception. So on the shadow side, a Capricorn who has lost sight of the necessity for its opposite, right, the balance between the Cancer and Capricorn. So it, um, if Capricorn energy has lost sight of the, the deep roots, um, the need for a private or home life, the nurturing comforts of cancer, then it can tend to be authoritarian, right? Overly strict, too austere, too harsh in its approach. And, um, you know, so, so the risk can be too much work and not enough comfort, really. Sort of like, you know, the boss, we may all have had one, who thinks that work should always come before family no matter what. Um, so Capricorn energy out of balance, it can really have us um, being slaves to the material world and just being too sort of, you know, head down and, and go. Even manipulating or wearing ourselves out right? Just, just striving to get to the top and, and just knocking other people out of the way, that kind of thing. Ultimately, that's not the optimal um, way we want to use this Capricorn energy. So I mentioned Saturn as the ruler of Capricorn. Saturn wants to keep in control of things. It wants to make rules and enforce the rules, keep things traditional and um, sort of the way it's always been, right? Saturn in Capricorn is about hierarchy and order and tradition. But Saturn is approaching, you know, getting closer and closer to Pluto and we'll have this major conjunction meet up with Pluto in January of 2020. I've talked about that before. Um, you know, this will be a big part of our story over the next, it was last year and will continue to be this Capricorn energy and this approaching conjunction, right? So Saturn is like getting closer and closer to Pluto and then backing off, retreating a bit, retrograding, you know, testing sort of the limits kind of thing. And um, eventually there will be no turning back when the meetup happens, right? Because Pluto has this no nonsense approach. Pluto doesn't care who you are in the hierarchy, um, doesn't care about tradition, doesn't care about the rules, um, you know, Pluto is there to unapologetically take down, burn up, destroy what no longer serves us, right? So that we can rise like the phoenix um, and build a better, stronger, more powerful version of whatever it is that needs to be rebirthed, right? So at the time of this eclipse, we can feel somewhat stuck between change and tradition. So in this sort of purgatory or bardo kind of thing between death and rebirth um that's okay and with this eclipse um we do have a sextile to neptune in pisces and so that is allowing us to access our intuition our empathy our compassion to understand that everything is happening you know for a reason um, even though we may not realize what that is at the time, it's all part of the bigger picture. It's divinely orchestrated and timed. And so we can have faith and allow things to be as they are, right? Without being too indulgent, because that's the shadow side of, of Pisces and Neptune, too lazy, too unrealistic, right? As I said, just do our best. Just do our best every day, whatever that best is. And, and in the end, that's enough and all will be well. 
Um, so let's go through each of the signs now and talk about um, this, you know, where this Capricorn new moon solar eclipse is happening for each of us. So this is marking kind of, you know, just to recap where there are flaws perhaps in our approach or where things need fi fixing or mending or acknowledging, right? Um, where there are some chinks in the armor and where, you know, where do things need to be maybe let go of, um, shifted or rebuilt, rebirthed in certain areas of our life. And this may not feel totally new to us because we've been experiencing a lot of Capricorn energy in this area of our chart over the course of 2018 already. Um, but we will have some new developments here. Um, and so, you know, that's what I'm going to speak to here for each of the signs. So beginning with Aries, Aries, this is happening in your 10th house. So Aries, what's not working for you um, career-wise, right? How, how is your public image perhaps out of alignment with your private self? Um, are you approaching your external life maybe with too much drive, too much masculine force? Is there a need to embrace maybe a more nurturing, um, receptive way, right, of, of attaining your, your goals? Particularly when it comes to your career and, and your status and, um, you know, your, your highest ambitions kind of thing, you know, do you need to be a little bit more realistic and maybe a little bit more balanced in your approach to handling authority even, um, or maybe quite simply, you know, Aries, maybe it's just you need to get back to the, you know, nose to the grindstone after the hiatus of the holidays and you need to put some energy and focus in your career. Um, the eclipse may ask you to sort of redefine what success means to you. What does success look like for you, um, Aries? That may be something, a theme that is playing out for you over the next year. So set some realistic intentions in this area and slowly and steadily do what needs doing to reach them. You know, your best every day kind of thing. So that's for you, Aries. And, and moving on to Taurus. Taurus, the eclipse is happening for you in your ninth house. So um, this is, you know, the house that, to put it succinctly, has to do with our worldview, ultimately, how we frame our experiences. It's about what we learn from or what we teach others. Um, it can have to do with higher education, um, so any kind of education that is outside of, you know, the, the basic elementary kind of traditional schooling. Um, it can have to do with long distance travel, it can have to do with foreign cultures, and, you know, our philosophy, knowledge that expands our horizon, really. So have you maybe been too set in your ways in this area? area, Taurus? Um, is there a need to be more realistic or perhaps less rigid? regarding those those things um is it time for you Taurus to, to consider finding a mentor a mentor or a teacher of some sort to help you shift your perspective um, or teach you something new um do you need to start are you looking to start a new program um you know like a, a, a long-term sort of educational program or something that has to do with with higher learning um, are you or are you perhaps being called to do that for others in some way so what is this eclipse trying to show you about how you could restructure that area of your life or take a different approach or better serve yourself and those you wish to um to align with right or to 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 reach ultimately so that's for you taurus some things to consider. And Gemini, for you, this eclipse is happening in your eighth house. So this will highlight where things need to be examined and where a new approach needs to be taken in terms of your intimate relationships, um, your shared resources, your psychological sort of depth and, and hidden knowledge. Is it possible, Gemini, that you've been avoiding having a look at those areas at, at those things for fear of what you might encounter there you know so Gemini be realistic face what needs facing in those areas in particular rip off the band-aid right and take care of you know practical things like taxes debts that kind of thing but also take care of 
of any issues around intimacy um, and around psychological healing as well, Gemini. Um, and so that is what's on offer for you in, in terms of this eclipse in uh, Capricorn and, and the eclipse cycle in general. Cancer, this is happening for you in your seventh house. So, so Cancer, the eclipse is happening in your opposite sign, right? Capricorn is your op opposite sign. So this is calling you to take note of where things might not be working optimally in your one-to-one -one relationships specifically. So how can you reestablish balance there? You know, where is maybe a fresh start possible in one-to-one -one relationships? Don't be afraid to acknowledge that things may not be perfect there. Um, it's okay, right? Awareness is everything. And when we are aware and we're willing to admit where things aren't working as we would like them to, you know, then we can set about doing whatever work needs to be done to make those things better, right? To improve on our one-to-one -one relationships. And so that's, um, that's what's happening for you, Cancer, with this eclipse. Leo, this is happening in your sixth house. And so, Leo, maybe, you know, your health and wellness routines or your daily routine has just gone off the rails um, over the holidays or even before that. You know, maybe it's it's taken a bit of a hit. And um, so, so this eclipse for you, Leo, is revealing where things may have gone awry there, right? In your, like in terms of the daily grind for you and your health and wellness routines um, and how you are in service to others as well. And so the eclipse is drawing your attention to where things need to get sort of back on track there. And maybe even where fresh starts need to happen. Balance needs to be reestablished there. You know, there is this rebirth um, in this area of life on offer for you here. And it doesn't have to happen overnight, Leo, right? Um, but there is, there's support for you to set some solid intentions there and to work towards, you know, attaining um, a more balanced approach and, and to sticking, you know, there's some help for you here in terms of being able to stick to those new new routines um and a new approach to your to your everyday life kind of thing moving on to virgo virgo this is happening in your fifth house i i neglected to mention and i'm sorry that of course you know we're talking to rising sign first and foremost here and um but also listen for your sun sign and your moon sign as well that will add layers of information for you but for Virgo this is happening in your fifth house right so children either your own children children you're associated with or work with um, children in your sphere in general also creativity so your creative self-expression creative projects even hobbies that kind of thing and pleasure right how we have fun in life these things are what's highlighted for you for um, with this eclipse and Maybe new routines need to be established, right? In terms of your children, like, so your kids are off. For example, my, you know, my, my kids are off school. And so um, Christmas holidays tend to be a bit all over the map. And, and it has been particularly so for us in our household um, with what's transpired here. Um, but so maybe it's time to now start getting back into routine, right? And, but that is part of a bigger picture that's playing out for you in general, over the next uh, year and this could be speaking to your creative pursuits as well right so there may be a rebirth in these areas of life and maybe you're going to get some creative inspiration and start a new project or or a new hobby you know um the eclipse is ultimately showing you, Virgo, where there are chinks in the armor, right? In this in this fifth house area and how you can begin anew and establish a better approach um, that's more, you know, ultimately more sustainable, more grounded, more practical, more long-term um, in terms of those fifth house themes. Okay, moving on to Libra. Libra, this is happening in your fourth house. And so 
Libra, the eclipse may reveal some issues surrounding family, um, your, your ancestry, your roots, your foundations, your literal place of living. Um, and it marks an opportunity to have a fresh start in this area. You know, so the way that life is structured kind of in this area or approached is up for renewal. And, you know, so Libra, um, use your mad skills, you know, that you have in terms of moderation, mediation, negotiation, you know, your desire for balance to help you navigate any, any bumps that come up for you. Um, and Libra, if you feel called to get off the fence kind of thing in order to reestablish that balance, then that's exactly what you should do. Sometimes we do need to rock the boat in order to um, reestablish, you know, equilibrium kind of thing. And so that may be the case for you in that fourth house area, Libra. Moving on to Scorpio. Scorpio, this is happening in your third house. So communications have been a theme for you in general, Scorpio, just like, you know, all of these houses that I'm speaking to each of the signs have been an area that's been highlighted, right? And for you, Scorpio, that's been communications. It's been sort of shorter travel or short trips, short commutes. Um, and also, you know, issues surrounding siblings, those relationships, right? Peers, our, our neighbors, our community. So that's a focus for you and it will continue to be. That's the focus of this eclipse for you, um, Scorpio. So there may be some, you know, perhaps some jarring news maybe that you'll have to respond to in a calm, mature, realistic fashion, right? That Capricorn way. Um, but this is an opportunity for a fresh start in those third house matters. So shifting how you communicate and with who really is, is highlighted here. Keep in mind that you've already learned about this, right? You've already had some learning and some growth in this area of your life um, over the last year. So use that as a jumping off point for uh, anything new that transpires here for you, Scorpio. Sagittarius, the eclipse in Capricorn is happening for you in your second house. And so this is calling your attention to your finances, to your values, to your self-worth. So something may be revealed to you in terms of these things that maybe you hadn't seen before, right? You're being encouraged to make changes in those areas, ultimately for your own good. Um, so this isn't about the quick fix, Sag. It's not about flash in the pan sort of ideas or schemes. It's about doing what needs doing to set yourself up for a solid, sustainable, secure future. Um, one in which you have mastery over, you know, over your money, over, you know, you have a good um, foundation and, a, and a, a really solid idea of what's truly important to you, what you really value, right? And um, a future where you know your worth, Sag, and you have confidence in your ability to take care of your own needs. So that's what this is about for you. Capricorn, this is your eclipse. Um, right? It's all about you. There's a lot of focus on you, Cap. There has been in the last year. There will continue to be moving forward. This eclipse um, is in your first house. It, it's, it's, it's all about you on a core level, right? It's asking you to examine very closely who you want to become ultimately, you know, over this next year. So where are you feeling out of alignment maybe, Cap, with, um, with who you are or who you want to be ultimately? It's about aligning your inner and your out outer worlds, right? Once and for all kind of thing. It's about taking care of your physical self um, and nurturing your, your being so that you can become the best, best you know, version of you ultimately. It's about balancing, you know, as I said, your inner and your outer, outer, outer worlds, sorry, um, and acknowledging that, that one is a reflection of the other, right? Ultimately. So it's really cap for you. It's time to get right with yourself and who you wish to be in the most authentic, empowered way possible. So um, Aquarius, moving on to you. This eclipse is happening in your 12th house, Aquarius. So it's showing you where you perhaps may not have been seeing ultimately, you know, yourself clearly. Um, it may bring 
hidden issues to the surface for you in order for you to face them and to begin anew. Um, so you may have some realizations about self-sabotaging behaviors. Um, you know, those things may come up for examination and healing ultimately. You may, Aquarius, experience a bit of a spiritual crisis, you know, but that is happening for the purpose of allowing you some real catharsis, some kind of spiritual rebirth, ultimately. Um, your, your dreams also, right, because the 12th house is the, is the house of, of the dream world, um, the unseen, the otherworldly. Um, your dreams may reveal something important to you, something that you need to pay attention to. So really, really take note of, of your dreams at this time, Aquarius. Okay, last but not least, um, Pisces. So Pisces, this eclipse is happening in the 11th house for you. And so this may be revealing some imbalances or some, you know, some flaws um, in terms of your wider, your friendship groups, right? It's less about your one-to-one -one relationships than about your, your groups, um, that you're involved in friendship groups, your connection to organizations, associations, clubs, even online, um, you know, groups that are connections. It's also about your vision for the future. So these areas, they are in need of a fresh start in some way, Pisces. And you may realize that, you know, you may either need to mend some broken, broken bridges, um, maybe some bridges that you have um, burned in the past, um, need to be rebuilt or you may just need to wipe the slate clean in um in certain areas you may need to just let go of certain certain groups certain associations um certain people and perhaps even certain dreams that are outdated now and that are no really you've realized um are no longer going to serve you moving forward right that's okay sometimes our dreams can shift and change our hopes and visions for the future right they 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 change and that's okay so it's okay sometimes to let go of dreams that are no longer ultimately um going to serve us in the end right and maybe not be realistic you know um for whatever reason anymore so you may realize that all is not as it may have appeared in those areas but you know what that's a good thing ultimately because when we are fully um, informed, right? We can make the best, most compassionate, loving decisions for our future and um, for the future of, of, of all, right? The 11th house is the house of, of the group of humanity kind of thing. Um, and so that's for you, Pisces. So I hope that you have all found this you know, somewhat insightful and helpful. And uh, please feel free to leave me a comment, a question, a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all of that. And um, I wish you all the best in 2019. You know, we're all in this together ultimately. And um, as I said, you know, just we're all doing our best. So do your best every day and um, be gentle with yourself and with each other. Okay. Take care. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.